Hello everybody and welcome to the very last SKU T lesson, at least in this beginning course on reading SKU T's. And we're going to be taking a look at four different versions of uh, SKU T's. We're going to look at four different days and we're going to kind of break down what each of them are saying so we can kind of get a better idea about, you know, how the process for reading these. This first one is from April 22nd this year. It is the uh, 19Z sounding uh, from Amarillo. That is the afternoon sound. It's 2 o'clock in the spring, actually. So we're going to take a look at this one. First thing I always look at, I mean, literally my eye goes right here first, 64 over 54. That's exactly what you're looking at in terms of uh, temperature and dew point. Uh, you can see very clearly the, dew, the moisture is very shallow. Surface dew points 54, just above the surface, you're, you're way lower than that. I mean, it drops quite dramatically. You also have a capping inversion where it's warmer and drier up in the upper atmosphere. That is very common in the spring. That's your elevated mix layer. That will happen. Uh, and, you know, the, the thing you'll notice is that your surface base instability down here is 15, 58. And that's because, you know, 64, 54, not bad. But look how much this... Uh, how much cooling and drying takes place just above the surface. Because of that, your mix layer cape as of 19Z is only 322. And look at that uh, sin, that monster cap of minus 248. We're going to have a lesson on the cap eventually that will let you really dig into that, and it'll involve a lot of skew T work. And the other thing I look at, you know, at this point, because this is the early part of the afternoon, those are the things I look at in the early parts of the afternoon for sure. You know, what's the cap doing? How deep is our moisture? In this case, not very deep. Uh, you know, what's the odds of us getting some surface warming? There's full sunshine going on here. So uh, you're going to get a little warmer to weaken that cap a little bit. The other thing I look at is the winds. And you can see clearly, uh, you know, pretty uh, decent uh, turning uh, basically from the surface up. But this is kind of dramatic, too. Uh, you actually see the hodograph does a little bit of a funky thing there. It's not uh, not very conducive right now. I mean, as you can see, your surface to one uh, kilometer helicity plus your surface three kilometer, very meager right now. It's only 72 and 14. Your uh, six kilometer shear is 39. So you do have enough for supercells. But if you're looking for tornadoes, that's just it's not happening. Uh, slow mover, so if you get a storm, I mean, look at this right motion, 14 knots. So... Uh, that you know, that's this one. Uh, not not much to it. It's a, a, an early or mid afternoon, right before storms form, I guess. So it is important, but you know that your environment's not quite there. Let's go to the next one. This one is from May the sixth at 19Z. This is at the same time, just a couple weeks later. I mean, look how look how different that <laughs> that looks. So this uh, this environment, 73 over 69, is obviously a lot bigger uh, in terms of that. In terms of what it's offering, very moist atmosphere. You can see actually uh, pretty saturated all the way up uh, to what used to be a cap. There used to be a cap here in the morning sounding. There was a little bit of a cap. But also, uh, you know, you again, 3500 surface cape off for obvious reasons. Uh, your mixed layer cape's 1409. There is a little bit of drying, a little bit of cooling. So, you know, you take all that to account on what the storm's ingesting. Uh, your LCLs are reasonable, you know, pretty reasonable. Your ML LCL mixed layer it's up in here so that's about where your cloud bases are just below the 850 level and then you just take a look at uh you know you take a look at the helicity 197 and 213 pretty good uh, six kilometers sure 41 so you got plenty for supercells on this on the very basic level you know we've we've looked at this uh and uh we looked at this i mean that's Basically, the simple point is, is when you're looking at skew teeths, especially from a chasing perspective, you really, I mean, you can go really deep if you want to, but there's only a few things you really need to look at to really get a good idea about what kind of day you're facing. Uh, you see here, this photograph's got all kinds of scrunched up stuff here. That's because of weakening winds with height. Uh, that's what that'll that's what will cause that. You also have some veering with height. You know you have uh you have it back. You are you are backing with height. Excuse me. You have it veering, then it backs, then it veers again, then it backs. So this hodograph right here, not the very greatest. Your low level environment's good, but uh, you know everything on the upper level is it's not the greatest. Very scrunched up, lots of twisty lines. You like I said in the uh, wind shear, you really want a hodograph that looks like that. For the very most violent kind of days but what happens here is that you actually have an outflow boundary very near this location and when you take into account the uh, even further back low level winds and such you actually have a much more impressive surface to one kilometer uh 
holistic values i mean you're already at 197 that's good enough for tornadoes anything over 100 you're game on so uh you know you, you can see you know the overall environment's not the greatest for big storm organization but it is good enough for tornadoes for sure and supercells so you don't need an ideal scenario to get tornadoes and supercells you simply need wind shear and uh, instability that's sufficient to get a storm to do its thing you won't get the ideal you know crazy cyclonic type of action with this uh, holograph and you certainly didn't on this day even though these storms did end up being prolific tornado producers at different times so that's just one thing to look at uh you know you, you got to keep an eye on all this stuff it's very important uh again let's take a look i mean you see the supercell composites 18.8 .8, your sig tours 1.7 3.1 we really didn't go into what's good here but anything i you know anything over two i kind of get uh excited about anything below that and it's there but it's not you know it's not extreme so that's something to keep in mind so let's take a look at the next one this one is from fort worth on may the 10th this is actually the may 11th zero z sounding which is may the 10th at 7 p.m this day was a very messy storm day there was just a ton of storms and actually here at Fort Worth, as of zero Z, you actually had a, some surface stabilization here a little bit because uh, the surface temp, you know, 75 over 71, it was a little bit higher. Uh, getting that to lift up uh, through the atmosphere was, uh, you know, it takes a little bit more. So, you know, you have 75 over 71, some real cooling and drying with height, of course, uh, that leads to a little bit lower uh, mixed layer cape. Also, your ML LCL is you know it's quite high actually you know it's up in here which you know when you dry a parcel at dry adiabatically and then go along the mixing ratio for the dew point with height that's where you end up with and then your L lfc is right up here it's actually i guess we're looking right in here and your lfc is right here and then it just takes off but it's only 1346 so it's not i mean 20 uh, 2800 surface cape 1300 mixed layers that's enough to do some damage for sure and again you see the hodograph there's it's really big here in the lower levels there's a lot of wind shear you can see it here but again it's just it's not the most ideal scenario above you get some uh, weakening and backing of winds a lot those that doesn't lead to ideal scenarios for sure in terms of storm organization but this day did produce a very weak but large tornado uh believe it or not uh just north of dallas fort worth by a couple hours or by an hour it was about an hour about 30 40 50 miles up by 35 you know this this environment not conducive for strong tornadoes it doesn't look like i mean when you look at it it's not the strong tornado environment you typically look at but this is an environment that did yield a few tornadoes and large hail and some damaging winds so you know again you know you have your supercell composites 13.8 that's pretty uh pretty good you have your effective layer stp at 0.8 and fixed layer at 4.3 and some decent lapse rates but look at this the three to six kilometer lapse rates actually below six that's not that's not very good that's not the most unstable atmosphere for sure you didn't get the biggest hell sizes on this day because of that but at least at this point and later you did have a little bit of warming so anyway so let's take a look at one final sounding this one is from may the 10th at 18 z this is actually earlier in the day compared to this one look how much that changes you know you go from 71 uh at zero z the dew point but it's mixed out 67 here look how much more uh saturated this is you know again you don't have much surface cape because look how much warmer it is aloft compared to the surface 68 or 67 that's a very cold kind of sounding however i will say your shear is a lot better earlier in the day you're actually your shear got a lot worse through the day that's actually a sign that you have a storm leaving you but, you know, you can't get uh, tornadoes if you have a huge surface inversion like this. It's not very easy to do. But, you know, you have cloud bases super low to the ground with this sort of a sounding. But this is a sounding that isn't yielding much in terms of composites. The lapse rates are just absolutely not there. I mean, your surface to three kilometer lapse rates 5.2 that's that's not even that's not even good enough for anything. I mean, you cannot get much out of that. So again, you know you see it you, you see some cooling uh right and through here uh warming down in the lower level so you, this is becoming more unstable but at the same time i mean it's it's good wind shear but the thermodynamics over here are not that good uh, you're not going to end up with a huge uh severe thunderstorm event so basically when looking through soundings the first thing i always do again is i just check the surface i check all this right here 
basically anything below 700 then I'll probably skip over here to the shear and the hodograph and then I'll dig into the uh, instability the shear composite parameters and then all this stuff right here uh, you know this day look at this look at the three to six kilometer uh, lapse rates hey that's really unstable this day is good for big hell for sure so again that's just the basic workflow um, it's just a demonst demonstrative purpose. I mean, there's several different ways you can attack these things. That's kind of how I attack them. Uh, there's no right way, no wrong way to do this. Well, actually, there are plenty of wrong ways, but there are plenty of right ways, I guess, is the best way to put it. There's a lot of ways to do this. There's a lot of ways you could do it and be completely dead wrong. So, again, pretty simple. Uh, skew tees on the surface look really complicated, but they're actually pretty simple to break down and dissect. And uh, if you want to chase storms or if you just want to be more prepared and more informed about what's going on in the atmosphere, these are essential to really getting a good read about what's going on. So with that said, I hope you learned something in this course. Uh, we will have many more courses on skew tees in the future, more advanced stuff. Also, we'll have, be incorporating these into other courses, especially now that we have a skew tee course done. So this course is mightily important. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for reading and thank you for participating. And we will see you on another course.